my favourite thing to do is actually go out at a time that everybody is going to work. So if they're like on the train heading into the office, I'm the one that's heading the other direction and going to like a cafe to work or, you know, I get to determine where I'm going and I feel like, I feel empowered that I can choose the time that I work is huge. Hi everyone, welcome to the Envisioner podcast. This is the podcast where we envision living our best lives by exploring everyday topics related to health, wealth, and community. On today's episode, we'll be speaking with Carmen Tubman, who will be speaking about living as a digital nomad, which is such an exciting topic as countries start reopening their borders and start to issue new visas to encourage digital nomads to live, work, and travel within their countries. Not to mention, we are also entering Web 3.0 and more and more digital opportunities are opening up. Carmen is an entrepreneur, consultant, and community manager. She works with global multinational corporations to develop and build new opportunities and new partnerships and coaches clients to build communities in real life and online. She is the founder of Coaching Community and has an amazing YouTube channel where she offers great advice about the importance of building connections and community. Carmen worked in the banking sector in the city for a number of years before moving to Singapore and ultimately deciding to work for herself and become a digital nomad. She now travels the world while working remotely and is going to share today her experience living as a digital nomad. So it is with great pleasure that I welcome Carmen onto the Visionaire podcast. Yay! Thank you so much, Nicole. I think that was the best <laughs> intro I've ever received on a podcast. Oh, thank I'm just you. Just gonna put it out there. That is so sweet. <laughs> thank you awesome. so much. Well, I do my research. I try to at least. So, and and I do appreciate you, you do. Uh, taking time to come on the Envisioner podcast. So, thank you. Of course. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. So, Carmen, um, I like to start by asking guests a bit about their background so our listeners can understand a bit more about who you are, what makes you tick. So, could you please tell us a bit about yourself, where you were born, your childhood, did you move around a lot, or were you mostly based in the same city, and what you were doing before you got into the digital nomad lifestyle? All right. This is like going deep. Like, oh, I love uh, it. (laughs) I love it too. You've asked me about my childhood before, so I appreciate that. (laughs) Um, So I grew up in Sydney, Australia, and I did not move around a lot. Funnily enough, I had never traveled before the age of 17. Wow. Um, So I lived in the same place in Sydney for 17 years. Uh, Grew up there and uh, then I was taken on a massive family trip around South America and I turned 18 there. And during those couple of months that we were traveling as a family, I discovered my love for travel. And that's where I became obsessed with traveling and I feel like I haven't stopped traveling since that point. That's amazing. Uh, But my childhood was great. It was very stable. It was, um, you know, a very happy childhood. But yeah, definitely one that I felt like I was very stable and secure in one place. And then over time, I learned uh, how amazing travel is and how life changing it is actually. So um, when I was 21, I actually moved to London, which is where you are now. But that's where I started, I guess, my professional life as well. I, I moved to London straight from university. And as you said, I was in banking. So I started off working in the city, did that for a few years. And then I started up my own business. Um, mm-hmm. We actually relocated to Singapore. Uh, with my partner and I decided it was a good time to move out of banking. It wasn't a passion of mine at all. Mm. Um, And I started my own business. I was Mm -hmm. probably pretty naive when I started my own business, but I just knew that I wanted to do something outside of, you know, the banking industry. I was super into tech. And so Mm. I actually started uh, started an e-commerce retail business. Right. Uh, with no background in retail whatsoever or e-commerce. So I learned to code. I learned how wow. to work with website developers. I built an amazing website. I learned a ton. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. Um, but I guess from there, I was bootstrapping this startup. I didn't have a lot of money for okay. marketing. And I joined a couple of Facebook groups. And yeah, basically, I, I, I kind of fell into community because mm. I, I found that people were in these groups, they were chatting, and they were my audience for my business. Yeah. And and so like they were already asking questions around like, oh, does anyone know where I can find this product? And I was selling it in my store. And so I was starting to post links and yeah. they were starting to move from the group to buying products. I'd sell out of products. And wow. then I, I kind of realized from there that that was the starting point from, oh my gosh, community is amazing. Like community <laughs> can really change the game. Like selling out of products, for free, like I wasn't spending any money on advertising. Wow. So uh, for me, that was like game changer. And I actually became way more obsessed with how mm -hmm. do you build a community mm -hmm. rather than how do I build an e-commerce retail store? Yeah. And so that was my, a huge pivotal change in my career because yeah. I decided to move into community full time. Right. Um, and I actually started, like full disclosure, I started by jumping back into corporate and working as a community manager for a corporate. So ah, interesting. Uh, that's how I, I think I had a lot of support working in that corporate where they paid for me to attend conferences and workshops and really just up my game when it mm -hmm. comes to building community. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, I got the opportunity to become a digital nomad in my next steps. So... Okay, so wait, so was that in Singapore that you went back in time at the corporate sort of? Yeah, so I was actually, actually moved to Hong Kong for a stint, mm -hmm. and that's where I jumped into corporate. There was an innovation lab in Hong Kong that needed mm. a global community manager that had mm. background in corporate, which I had with the banking mm -hmm. experience, mm -hmm. but also had the, a background in startups, which I had right. with my startup. So that's why they were willing to take a risk with me, I think, and... Uh, basically gave me a community manager role despite the fact that I'd really only had limited experience building community like through Facebook. Yeah, um, so yeah. I was super lucky with that transition, but at the same time, because I met all their criteria, it meant that they were willing to invest in me. Yeah. And um, it's where I really supercharged my community knowledge mm -hmm. um, and, and learned how to build community for a global innovation company at a corporate which Absolutely. Is, is an amazing first step for me. So it seems like you were able to leverage some of the experience that you had built over the five years or, you know, before mm -hmm. then Correct. in order to bring that and legitimize the opportunities. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that was really important because I knew I needed to legitimize what I... I knew community building was going to become more of a professional career because mm -hmm. I could see the opportunities it had uh, with the impact on business. So the yeah. fact that I could sell out a product on my e-commerce store, I started to learn of all the other ways that community can impact business, whether it's reducing support ticket costs. Like there's mm -hmm. tons of different types of communities out there. And once I was geeking out on that, I realized I need to actually get <laughs> some sort of professional uh, accreditation behind me and then from there I could then branch out and that's actually where my digital nomad um, I guess opportunity came yeah. about was because yeah. I was willing to go to these conferences um, mm -hmm. they were global I was willing to take online courses I was willing to like really geek out and read books and connect with as many people as possible about mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. um, that's where I think I developed relationships with people um, when opportunity came up that was a digital nomad type role. Yeah. Um, that's where I was in the right place, right time and managed to get that gig. Um, and that was, it started off as a part-time role mm -hmm. that grew into pretty much full-time opportunity, but okay. it was fully remote. So I was right. working in Hong Kong at the time, but yeah. the, um, the opportunity was West Coast USA. Wow. So, um, crazy time zone differences, but it actually say, worked yeah. really well for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and I was willing to do it because for me, it was the first opportunity I had to look at how do I go from working in a corporate, which mm -hmm. I knew long term I didn't want to do. I always knew that. I knew mm -hmm. that this was, this is a place where I could really 
learn a lot about community and mm -hmm. I could do a lot for them, but mm -hmm. it was almost like proving to the world that I could build community in a corporate environment or like in a big business environment where they had a lot of budget to spend versus yeah. me in the startup where I had zero dollars, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a great opportunity for me to do that, but I knew that it didn't tick all my boxes. The fact that I had to go into a physical office yeah. uh, and they didn't really bend too much with allowing me to work remotely. Like we would do work trips uh, around the world and that would be amazing, but mm -hmm. it was always, as soon as you get back, it was back into the office. It wasn't mm -hmm. like, okay, you can work remote. Right. So I knew that I, I wanted to find a role that allowed me to, to travel <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and have that flexibility wherever I wanted to be. I didn't actually yeah. want to be in a physical office all the time. Well, that's very interesting. So I, I love the background because now I feel like listeners, the audience now understand. So you started in Australia, very kind of con conventional lifestyle. In Absolutely. that sense, traditional. Yeah. Traditional. Yeah, <laughs> traditional. And then it was the opportunity to travel with your family that prompted to South America, which is fantastic, mm -hmm. uh, prompted this travel bug in a way, yes, right? Absolutely. And, and my parents never have never forgiven themselves for doing that, by the way. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> They're like, when I brought it back in Australia, what happened? <laughs> Um, yeah, I can imagine. I mean, I like obviously myself being in the UK, um, and originally from Canada, um, I know, yeah, it's hard sometimes for the parents yeah, when they, sure. when the children fly off, but it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Right. It is. It is. And, and now you're closer. Really supportive. They were supportive of that yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you came to London after, um, you, after uni and you worked in banking, very traditional kind of corporate settings super traditional super yes. traditional <laughs> yeah. well, really good in a way because mm. it was it was my you know fresh out of the gate you know and yeah I yeah. learned how to deal with talking in a professional way and working in a professional environment and yeah. almost like the corporate lingo right like I think that's actually it's it's not a bad thing to yeah. be exposed to that because no, you do yeah. learn a lot of useful skills as well. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And training, amazing training, yes. I'm sure. Yes. And then, but then you always kind of knew that this wasn't necessarily like the long-term lifestyle for you, the kind of corporate nine to five or nine to nine. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I was always like the terrible employee. <laughs> Carmen, I doubt that. No, you're such a hard worker. I was always the person that was like, why are we why are we doing this why are we having back-to-back -back meetings when most of them we don't even need to be here so i was always the person that I, i'm just <laughs> not a great long-term employee for a business and i think that was mm -hmm. something that, that over time i realized and then almost like this introspection right like well what is it that i'm not you know what am i not getting here because I, all my colleagues were really happy to to be in the corporate environment and they were they were happy to not really happy I wouldn't say but they right. they definitely put up with it more than I did and so I, th I think it was that realization right. that I actually wanted to work in a different way and from there the digital nomad wasn't exactly around when I first started mm -hmm. my corporate career and it was only really later when we started to get more and more people that yeah. were earning a living from being online and it didn't matter where they were based in the world as long as they had yeah. good enough internet that's where i think finally i felt the mm -hmm. place where i belonged yeah no that totally makes sense i think i would love to dive into the digital nomad lifestyle um and a little bit more and i think it would be super sure. helpful i think most people watching this probably either based on the conversation so far understand that digital the kind of concept of a digital nomad, but for those that are just either joining or um, are still not sure, could you please provide your definition of what a digital nomad is? Sure. Well, I think there's many different types of digital nomads, but what I would say that they all have in common is they do not need a physical office mm -hmm. location uh, to do their job and they make the primary source of their income is 
through online or yeah. through being digital, right? So it's, it's not mm -hmm. like selling lemonade at a stand kind of thing, right? Like we're talking very much being yeah. online, uh, selling either products or services um, and, and yep. deriving an income from doing so. Yeah. Um, but in terms of where mm -hmm. they're located, it's completely up to them. I would say the majority of do mm -hmm. digital nomads that I know are obsessed with good Wi-Fi because to do their job, the yes. majority of us need a decent internet connection. Okay, right. And that leads to this idea of digital nomad hubs. Is that? Yes, I think so. And I think to be honest, it's, it can feel like a really lonely type of, I don't want to say job, but it's, it's a lonely type of life in a way mm. because you're, the great aspect about working for a corporate or working in an office is that you actually have a huge element of social um, activity that happens when you go into an office, right? Like you see your colleagues every day, mm -hmm. you have water cooler moments. Uh, a lot of digital nomads actually work for themselves um, or they, they just don't have colleagues or maybe they do, but it's remote. Mm -hmm. And so of course you can connect virtually, mm -hmm. but there is this element of where are my people? Like, where can I go mm -hmm. and hang out with other people that are in a similar lifestyle to me? Uh, we can potentially share uh, stories, we can share tips, we can even share accommodation mm -hmm. and that reduces costs for some digital nomads. Yeah. Um, and, and just, yeah, I think there's that need for belonging, right? So with digital nomads that you've seen these hubs like places in Bali and in Lisbon, um, there's just different parts of the world where I guess nomads have naturally congregated mm -hmm. because they're looking for places that have low cost typically. Yeah. Um, because they are, it's really, really hard, I think, for a lot of people to grasp how difficult it can be to earn money online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, 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 for some, you know, it's, it could be that they really need to keep costs down. Yeah. And so you have places like Bali, for instance, yeah. where you can live a really, really great lifestyle, um, be amongst many others that are also in the same sort of situation as you. They mm -hmm. don't have, bosses that they have to report to every day in the office. Um, they could have flexible hours. And so you can hang out with these people. You could go to co-working spaces with them and just develop even a social network for yourself or a professional network. Um, and so I think that's why you've got these hubs that have really uh, come up and they're so popular and they're amazing. I've been to the one in Bali yeah. and the community element is so strong there. So Wow. Oh, that's amazing. That's yeah. cool. It's, um, it's, I think it's also because with the scene, like digital nomads are typically more open-minded to meeting mm. other people. They're open-minded to opportunities. And mm -hmm. because of that, you just have a real energy and magic happens because of these types of people coming together and connecting. And do new opportunities tend to happen as well? Definitely. Lots of like collabs or, I mean, you have people that literally make money because they're Instagram managers, right? Or mm. like their social media. And then you've got other people that are like selling product. And so if somebody that's selling a product needs social media mm -hmm. uh, managers, you know, like that's just one of the many, many, many ways that you can collaborate. <laughs> that together, is cool. Right? That is cool. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It sounds amazing. In like paradise too, like the setting of paradise. Well, it does, but and there is just... realities as well. I mean, uh, in Bali, there were energy uh, power cuts. Oh. And mm -hmm. that's, and so you have to, there's also a certain element of resilience that's required. Mm -hmm. And and just being able to, to work out solutions in ways, like it's not for everybody because I know there's people that would get really, really stressed out about the lack of routine potentially if it wasn't set for them or they're stressed out that there isn't like a set office that has everything that you have, like whether it's internet, whether it's IT, mm -hmm. like IT departments don't exist when you're a digital nomad. You yeah. have to either figure it out yourself or you're paying somebody to help you typically remotely. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot of challenges that come with being a digital nomad. Yeah. I can, yeah. It seems yeah. like, you, and, and, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Go ahead, sorry. No, 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 please, this is very interesting. Yeah. I was just trying to say for some, it's, you know, it can be the stress of trying to find their next gig or like if they're mm. 
a, a freelancer and they need to find clients to earn money, then it can be very stressful. Some months they could earn way more money than they expected and some months they could really struggle yeah. to earn an income. And so just I'd say stability is one of those aspects that can be lacking with digital nomads in my case not so much Mm -hmm. uh, compared to the freelancers because I've been working on contract um, like six month contracts yeah but having said that it's still stressful there are still moments where I I don't have the benefits that full-time employees have for instance so you have to price that in or you have to work out ways um, to to overcome you know those challenges mm-hmm. so uh, an IT help desk is something that I'll always appreciate with corporate because <laughs> there's so many times that something will happen and if I could just call somebody and they just turn up <laughs> that would that would solve so many problems right so well that sounds think, yeah. sorry that sounds like an opportunity potentially for someone <laughs> listening who wants to be a digital, digital nomad, nomad to help the digital nomads they yeah, should I have agree. like one designated IT person I bet you that person would actually make a lot of money a hundred percent that should exist yeah, if it doesn't already <laughs> Oh dear. Okay, so some so, so we've kind of um, talked about some of the challenges that you you faced, or you know, digital nomads tend to face, and obviously this would be stability, and kind of this element of loneliness at times. Um, I wonder about safety. Do you is that something that has ever really either in your experiences has come up or? that you know of? Because I have heard that digital nomad hubs tend to be generally quite safe, but I don't know if you've experienced anything differently. Yeah, there is. It's actually a really interesting question because I think a lot of digital nomads will try to arbitrage the world, right? And they'll go and live in these lower cost uh, countries, not necessarily where like safety is super high compared to other parts of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I know in Bali, for instance, there are a lot of villa robberies that were happening mm. at the time that I was there. And that's where like people's laptops would get stolen and like other goods that were considered high value in Bali where they could just be sold off like phones and, yeah. and laptops. And those are really essential items to a digital nomad. Mm. Like if you steal my laptop, I, I, I mean, Obviously, you work in the cloud and all these things, but it's a, an essential part of your yeah. office equipment Absolutely. that it's really tough. So, And they, they have to budget almost or have insurance. And there is definitely digital nomad insurance out there okay. um, that exists. But, you know, even just budgeting for that. Mm. Um, I think, I mean, I, as a solo woman as well, when I travel, um, I definitely have to be mindful of personal safety. Yeah. And so... Uh, I won't book, for instance, accommodation that is shared yeah. just because no. I don't have to, number one, yeah. but I, I wouldn't consider doing that. Whereas I do know that there's some nomads that they do book, mm. you know, lower cost accommodation or, or they book big houses mm-hmm. where it's like shared uh, co-living experiences. And that's, you know, there's definitely elements where you have to just be more cautious about your safety if you're a woman. Yeah. Yeah. No, that totally yeah. makes sense. I think that's, an aspect maybe where young women who are going to be taking on that should be really mindful of that. Um, But okay, so those are some of the challenges. Um, What about the benefits of being a digital nomad? Obviously, we've talked about them implicitly, the fact that, you know, freedom, travel, (laughs) sounds amazing. (laughs) What else do we need? But do you have any other... Paradise. <laughs> I'm actually flying to Phuket. Uh, oh my tomorrow. gosh! Stop. Tomorrow, yeah. Thursday. Yeah. So that's that's a huge benefit. It's like, nice. and and it's because it's the rainy season there. Okay. So for me, I the prices are really low. But for me, I can stay for longer because I don't have to take leave. Mm-hmm. Um, I am still officially working right. from Phuket. It's just that. Um, because it's off season. Yeah. Um, I don't actually care if it rains, you know, like 90% of the time, <laughs> the 10% <laughs> the sun comes out and I can go have a nice walk on the beach. I'll be really happy. Um, but I guess that's all talking of like arbitraging the world, right? It's just like, I, uh, my favorite thing to do is actually go out 
at a time that everybody is going to work. So yeah. if they're like on the train um, or like the subway or whatever, and they they're like heading into the office, mm -hmm. I'm the one that's heading the other direction right. and going to like a cafe to work or, you know, I get to determine where I'm going and I feel like I, I feel empowered that mm. I can choose like the time that I work mm -hmm. is huge. You yeah. know, like I, I can work at times where um, I want to work mm -hmm. and the off times or like when everybody's in the office, I can actually go use the gym Yes, and that's when it's quiet. Yeah. So, or oh, I get off peak rates, nice. right? So, um, that's a really nice plus to me is that you feel like you're more in control of how you spend your hours working as well as how you spend your hours not working. And you're not competing against like the masses of people that are, you know, working the traditional work hours. Mm -hmm. So I really like that aspect. Mm -hmm. um, and besides that, obviously I, I love the travel. Mm -hmm. I also love the fact that you can pick and choose your own contracts, for instance, or mm. your own work. Mm -hmm. Like obviously the flip side is you don't have stability, mm -hmm. but the pro is that I've turned work down because I felt like the client isn't right for me or, you know, like I know it's going to be a nightmare to work on that project. Mm -hmm. Whereas typically as a full-time employee, you don't really feel like you can do that as much yeah. because, you know, you're working in an environment where you're expected to take on like those projects mm -hmm. or it's more difficult, uh, I would say. So I, I enjoy the flexibility of working where I want, when I want, and, and what, what I actually do as well, I can choose. That's amazing. Um, and what does an average day look like to you? <laughs> so there is actually not, there isn't an average day. I would say because I actually work, I actually work globally. So the time zone situation can be, it's not for everybody. I can sometimes be on a webinar at 11 o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. But I really enjoy what I do. So for me, it's like, well, that's fine because I have more of the daytime available and I'll start working like 6 p.m. or something, right? Right, right. right. <laughs> um, and then the next day I could have a 7 a.m. work call, mm. um, but I could be done by midday. Right. And so to be honest, it really is dependent mm. on like I have different days, there's different meeting times, depending on who I'm meeting, where in the world they are. Yeah. Um, but I would say I do definitely do a lot of work um, on my phone as well. So mm -hmm. just being really flexible, like wherever I'm out. Yeah. I, because I'm a community manager, I manage communities or I mentor people with communities. And mm -hmm. so a lot of the times I can just look at my phone and that would be absolutely fine. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think typical day doesn't really exist <laughs> for me. I feel like, and, but that's great because I'm not good at routine yeah. and I'm not good at having the same, I'd always take a different route to mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. For instance, like my colleagues would be like, what do you mean? And I'd be like, well, I would walk different roads to the train station or <laughs> I would try and take like a different bus to go somewhere and then take a different connection because I just, I hated doing the same thing every day. Yeah. And I, I wanted to keep my brain engaged and not feel like I was sort of a robot that was on <laughs> autopilot mode. So, um, so for me, not having a typical day is perfect. That's, that's very, actually, that's super sweet when you said that. I think that's really nice. And um, I really like that, actually, taking different routes to work. I, I too, am someone who tends to thrive on not instability, but, you know, the kind of set routine for me, sometimes I find very stagnant. And so for me, I, I understand that completely. So I'm going to try taking different routes. Yeah. Thank you, Carmen, for that. Yeah. <laughs> You're I'll text you. I think it's just, oh, of course, I'm always here for you. Um, but yeah, I think, and it's it's a partially a reason why I started Community Coach as well, which is where I, I still work uh, for clients and I have my digital nomading. But one of the things that I actually started during COVID was 
this concept of like how do you start a community for others because they like, just came to me during COVID it was like how do I actually build an online community now that mm. we're all online and everything is virtual people are kind of freaking out right they're like I've had real life events and, and done community in person but never done it virtually and with community coach which is it's really just a mentorship program with structure and that was something that was completely new to me I'd never mentored people before um, but because I'd had so many years experience building so many communities, I felt like it was a natural progression for me to try, you know, something new. It was a new business model mm -hmm. in a way. Like I had to work out how do I even charge for my time in mentoring other people because before I was just charging for providing like community mm -hmm. management mm -hmm. services. So this was like trying something different. And I think that's an element of being a digital nomad as well. You have to think about like adapting and there's going to be all these opportunities mm -hmm. that come your way and you could potentially like grasp one of these opportunities and it leads you down a completely different yeah. path as to how you're earning income for instance absolutely and everyone should go check out Carmen's YouTube <laughs> channel because it's very very yeah. good and you will get further advice and learn a lot more um, about building a community so I'm just gonna say that <laughs> We met on YouTubing, right? Like Nicole. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we I course. yeah, we did. And we, yeah, we did an yeah. online course. And that's like another thing. We became right? fast friends. Uh, YouTubers are digital can be digital nomads too, right? Like they literally earn from being YouTubers. Which I remember when I learned about this, I thought it was absolutely crazy that that you could make yeah. videos and earn money. And I thought that was just the coolest aspect. And yeah, it's yeah. it's definitely been a, a wild journey. I've I've been with YouTube now for yeah. over a year, like uh, creating videos around community, and I've really really enjoyed mm -hmm. trying that out as well. Ah, that's amazing, Carmen. Well, I'm not there yet. I'm not making no, money, but, no, no, <laughs> but I'm just <laughs> creating the videos. <laughs> and to be honest, yeah, sometimes it's nice to do things where it's not about making money right it's about like uh, for me I really enjoyed the process of learning how to make sure. videos because I didn't I didn't know how to even yeah. edit a video before I started so it's kind of cool <laughs> to learn new skills totally I agree 100 percent okay before we move on to the last segment I just wanted to ask you very briefly if you could provide some advice for aspiring digital nomads what would that be so I would say find whatever it is that you naturally are passionate about. Like for me, I was super passionate about community and how do I connect people online virtually. And so for me, it was really easy to geek out on that. And I would recommend to anybody, no matter what it is, like whatever your passion is, focus on that and then work out skills that you can learn online. Um, whether it is, for mm -hmm. instance, okay, you know what, I wanna create a YouTube channel um, or mm -hmm. maybe you want to sell a product that's related to your passion or a service. So I think mm -hmm. just focusing first on the interest and then uh, you can work out how to monetize that later. I think that's really important because there's going to be really tough days as a digital nomad and you want to make sure that you're enjoying whatever it is that you're doing. Absolutely. Oh, great advice. Thank you, Carmen. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> Let's move on to the final segment, which is the Envisionaire Questionnaire, which is a feature of the Envisionaire podcast. These are three questions that we ask based on the past, present, and future. Okay. Let's dive right in. First question, based on everything you've learned so far in your life, what advice would you give your 15-year-old self? Oh, I know. Oh, that's so nice. Sweet. Okay. What would I give my 15-year-old <laughs> self? I would say be patient because mm. it all works out. Mm. Love that. Yeah. I was really so stressed about my career at that age. You know, like how was <laughs> I going to get a job and, you know, live that good life? And so, yeah. yeah. And it, it all, all worked, worked out. out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Right. Second question. Based on where you currently are in your life, if you could seek advice from anyone, who would it be? Oh, I like this question. I think I would seek advice from people that have been able to build in Web3 mm. and create the next level of community because there are some incredible projects. I've been geeking out about them and, and making YouTube videos 
about them and I would love to chat to them and find out how they got started because it's at the complete forefront of community. It's yes. like the new wave. And so I'd really love to, to hear from them and mm -hmm. yeah, and just learn how they got started and, and where they're hoping to, to end up. Amazing. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you, Carmen. <laughs> and the final question is, what's one goal you want to achieve in the next five years? Oh, okay. The next five years. I think travel to the countries that are still on my bucket list. Uh, one of them being Africa, well, many countries in Africa, to be honest. I haven't, I haven't been to any countries in Africa besides Morocco. Oh. So that's like my one part of the world that I feel like I still need to, to cover. Amazing. And I'd really love to give back more. So I think, mm. yeah, that's something that I'm thinking about a lot more. And obviously I've started with coaching others, uh, you know, to help them even with their careers. I've been starting yeah. to do that, but, but just giving back to people that have been less fortunate and um, yeah, I would love to do more of that and spend more time doing that really. Well, you have the spirit of a very generous person, so I have no doubt that you oh, will. Thank you. And I can't wait to keep track of all your adventures um, to Africa. So <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Safari, here I come, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Well, thank you so awesome. much, Carmen, again, for taking the time to be part of the Envisionaire uh, podcast. We really appreciate this. And thank you again for sharing everything about living an amazing life as a digital nomad. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Nicole. Talk to you later. Bye, everyone. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit subscribe and check out this video here.